Hey, welcome back everybody. Thanks for tuning in to another episode. Uh, today we've got War Pig in the garage. It's going to be getting a new set of front and rear uh, gears. Uh, on my travels out to Colorado a few weeks ago, on the way home, uh, my gears started making a whole bunch of noises. Um, I believe that it was a bearing going out. We're going to pull it all apart today and check it out, but I just went ahead and decided to go with a whole new gear set, just freshen everything up. Um, we were sponsored by Yukon Gear. Uh, they were kind enough to send me a new set of 488 gears for War Pig. Uh, so today we're going to be showing you how to install that with the tools that you may have at home. I've got my cousin Cole here uh, to assist in the installation today. So let's get after it. So as we crawl underneath the Jeep, um, first thing that we notice is there's a lot of fluid coming out of the uh, pinion on the rear differential. So my guess would be that's probably the first place to start. Uh, also, as we take the drive shaft and check for play, uh, there's a lot of play coming out of that rear end. Um, so we're going to start with the rear differential, pull it apart, check out. Uh, and see if there's any problems coming out of that. You can also see here on the gas tank where the fluid has been uh, seeping out of the pinion and spraying over on the gas tank. So it's definitely got a pretty major leak coming from the rear differential. Um, so let's get this apart. Let's inspect all the components inside of that. Alright guys, first thing we need to do is jack the vehicle up, get the wheels off the ground, put it up on jack stands. Next thing we're going to do is take the drive shaft off. It takes an 8 millimeter socket. I've got it on a quarter drive uh, ratchet here. Um, got eight bolts. They're fairly long-winded um, So it might take a little bit of time to get it off, but nothing difficult here um, you May have to have a friend put it into neutral so that you can spin the drive shaft uh, In order to access all the bolts um, then go back to park obviously to get it loose bolts out. Um, there's a couple of access ports in the back side of your uh, pinion flange. The small center punch, something like that, will fit down in there. Uh, and then just give it a few taps with a hammer to get it uh, separated. They can get kind of corroded as it goes through water and things like that and be pretty stuck together. So a couple good taps with a hammer will get it out. Um, next thing you're want, going to want to do is to drain the fluid out of your differential. Um, I like to go ahead and pull the fill tube first. Um, you're going to use a 3 8 ratchet. Um, no socket, no nothing. The 3 8 ratchet fits right directly in the hole. So we'll pull the fill tube out first. Just a few quick turns and it should be out. That releases the pressure so that it will drain properly. And then your drain plug is right here. Same socket, a few quick turns, and that will be out. Keep pressure against your plug as you're pulling it out until you feel the threads let go. It will save your hand from a lot of extra goop. And let that drain. Well, uh, now that we've got the uh, oil all drained out of the differential. We're going to go ahead and remove the diff cover off the rear and just inspect everything visually uh, to see if we see anything obviously damaged before we start pulling everything out of here.
cover pulled off. Uh, we've inspected the gears in here and there is some abnormal wear to them. Uh, looks like something's been eating into the teeth of the gears. Uh, so we're going to pull everything out so we can get a better look at everything. The next thing that we're going to need to do is remove the tires and then we'll pull the axle shafts so we can actually pull the carrier and the gear assembly out of the rear end. Alright, now that we've got the tires removed, we're going to go ahead, remove the caliper bracket, remove the caliper, uh, remove the rotor, and then we're going to slide the axle out. Um, we'll show you a little way of getting the axle out if you don't have a puller or anything like that. Um, again, this is a how-to. Do this in your garage at home and using what you have uh, at your availability. So, let's get after it, start getting this apart, and get the axles out. Alright, so we got everything removed, it's time to slide the axle out. As you can see, it's not free, doesn't want to just come out. Uh, a lot of times you're going to need a puller or like a slide hammer to get it out. Um, but if you're just in your garage doing it, a quick and easy way uh, to be able to do that is just take your rotor off, flip it around, put it back on the opposite direction, go ahead and start your lug nuts and just get them uh, about halfway tightened on there. You don't want to tighten them down uh, and then you'll be able to use your rotor as a slide hammer. Alright, once you got them on you just take your rotor and just got it slid out of course it makes a little bit of a mess but that's a way that you can do it without having a slide hammer at home all right so we've got everything out it's ready to finally pull the carrier uh, out of the differential um, to do so we're just going to remove these four bolts once we remove those bolts we'll need to uh, just kind of pry and work the gears out as an assembly and then we'll get everything out of it to inspect uh, the full damage of everything on it Alright, so one thing I forgot to mention, um, of course this is a Rubicon, so it does have already the factory electric lockers on it. Um, so when you go to remove it, you have to remove the bolt that's up here uh, that pulls out the factory uh, locker wire uh, so that you can get everything out without ripping out your lockers. There's a clip on the back of it as well that has to come off in order to get the wire to pull through. Yep, yep, yep. I got this out. Pull it out. So the next thing you're going to want to do is remove the pinion nut. It is a 33 millimeter in the rear, um, so we'll take that off with an impact. Um, you may have to come up with a way to hold this, but a good strong impact should just zip it off there. Um, then we'll have to knock off the uh, flange here in order to get to the seal to take the seal off. So. And there's your flange. And take the edges of your 
um, seal here and just kind of crumple them in and then it should pop right out. All right, so there should be a little backwasher back here, like that pretty thin little shim guy. We will save that for later. So now you have a pressed on bearing here. Um, so that gets pressed on as you bolt the flange in. So what we have to do is we have to hit the end of the pinion uh, in order to drive the pinion um, back out through that pressed on bearing. Uh, in order to get a bigger path, we will screw the old nut on, not the new one, but the old pinion nut. It is a locking nut, so it won't go on there very far. And then, grab your trusty hammer, wherever I put it, and whack away. Doesn't take much. So she's out. We will pull the nut back off. Pull the bearing out. And the crush sleeve, the back side. And there you have it. So here is the old pinion that we just took out of the Jeep. Um, as you can see here on the teeth, uh, there's a lot of scarring, uh, a lot of pits and nicks taken out of the edges of it. Um, so definitely had something in the rear differential that was bouncing around, uh, causing this to, you know, get torn up. Um, as you can see on the new gear, uh, it's nice and shiny, no uh, nicks on the edges or anything like that. Um, you know, that's how the gear is supposed to look. Okay, so another thing we need to do is remove this old ring gear because um, it's going to be hard to see, um, but it's chewed up just like the uh, just like the pinion was. Um, so we're going to remove this ring gear, uh, put the new rear gear on, um, try and best we can inspect the spider gears um, to make sure there's no debris or any uh, chipping or anything in there as well. Um, and then we'll reinstall the new ring gear and we will start reassembly. Okay guys, well, one of, the, uh, one of the things I wanted to go over with you is as we start to set this pinion and stuff back up, um, just a trick I like to do um, is get an extra set of bearings. These are not the bearings from the kit. These are just an extra set that uh, I've had around for a while doing these uh, for a couple different people. Um, what I've done is uh, ground out the inside of them um, in order for them to slip on. These are normally a press fit, but if you grind out the centers of them, they will slide on. You still want them to be fairly difficult to slide on, but they do slide on. This is how that's going to sit up. I also use the old uh, crush sleeve during mock-up uh, instead of the new one. That way we get the proper crush as we're setting our pinion depth and all that. Um, so we'll see this more as we go through. Because you're going to go in and out three or four times, uh, maybe more, in order to get that pinion depth just right. Uh, and these bearings make that very, very easy. Uh, to do because your shims are actually going to go in this section here. Um, so as we go through, uh, you'll see that these will come on and off multiple, multiple times.
All right, so we're going to go ahead and install the ring gear onto the carrier. Um, from Yukon, they do send you two different sets of bolts. And if you look on the back side of your ring gear, uh, there's two different sides of holes. I'm guessing that's for different carriers for different applications. Um, so on the Jeep, you're going to use the bigger sets of the bolts. Um, and we'll just go ahead, slide this on, flip it over, uh, start two bolts in there to hold everything into place. And then you're going to want to take the rest of the bolts, put thread locker on them, tighten everything down, and then you'll pull those remaining two bolts, put the thread locker on them, and tighten it down. When you're doing this, of course, if you're building this on a bench, um, you're only going to be able to get it so tight um, as it sits here. So once we get this all bolted back into the vehicle, we'll be able to do our final torque uh, on everything. And these ring bolts are torqued to 135 foot-pounds. So when you're putting these on, you don't need a whole lot of thread lock on there. Uh, really just a dab will do. Um, you put too much on, these things just will never come off. And just remember the two bolts um, that you originally put in there so you can take them out afterwards and put that thread lock on. I always like to just keep the one right in front of me and then I put in the other one just directly across from that to help me remember. And once we get these all put in, uh, we're just going to take a 21 millimeter um, socket and an impact. We'll just snug everything down and then again we'll do the final torque uh, once it's in the vehicle. Now we've got everything tightened. Uh, again, we'll do final torque. I can't stress that enough uh, how important it is to go through Torque all your bolts, um, torque them to manufacturer specifications of what the manufacturer recommends with their product. Uh, it just it helps keep everything under warranty, um, but it's been tried, it's been tested, you know, they have those torque specs for a reason. So once you get this in the vehicle, go back, torque everything, make sure it's to the proper specifications um, just to eliminate any issues with bolts backing out. Uh, and causing you catastrophic failures. Uh, we're going to go ahead now and uh, start setting this in the uh, pinion into the vehicle and uh, we'll do our fitments uh, for final install. All right, next up here is mock-up phase. So we've got our clearance out bearings um, on our pinion. Um, so we're going to put our pinion in next, um, get our other clearance bearing on the back side to hold in, put our pinion flange uh, and our nut and our washer, wherever I set those, they're right here somewhere, right there. Um, we'll put those in, then we'll set the uh, carrier and the ring gear in, um, get that all bolted into place, and then we are going to uh, check the mesh of the gears uh, with some marking paste. Um, we'll run it around a little bit, we'll show you that later, and also check our uh, clearances and our in play. Um, with a dial indicator. Um, but first, let's get this all uh, put together so that uh, we can check that. There's a small shim here um, that goes against the uh, outer bearing on this side that keeps the flange from riding against uh, the bearing on the inside. So make sure you put that first. We're not putting the seal in at the moment uh, because with as much in and out that we got, we'll end up nicking the seal and causing a leak that'll down the road. We're also reusing for mock-up purposes only the old uh, pinion nut. Uh, these are locking nuts um, so after they've locked in one time um, they don't work again but for the purposes of what we're doing we can run it on and off without uh, damaging our new locking nut. Knock that on. Washer. Nut.
So then we're just gonna snug down with the impact and a 33 millimeter socket, the pinion nut. That feels pretty good right there. Uh, again, just for mock-up purposes, when we get to the final deal, we'll do final torques and all that stuff to make sure everything is set up the way it's supposed to be. So I'm going to come around on the other side, and we'll put the carrier in. Okay, we've moved around on the opposite side. Um, we're going to put the carrier in. We've got our bearing race and our shim. Um, we're going to start with the uh, factory shims that came with the gears that were in it. Uh, we're going to start with those first to see where we're at in the, me the mesh up. Um, it's been my experience that these are pretty darn close um, with the gears that I've done uh, over the last few years. So this is a bit of a balancing act because you got to kind of hold all three of these pieces together at the same time. And they kind of all got to go in together. And this thing's probably about, I don't know, 30, 40 pounds. So it's not light by any means. So as you get it kind of rocked in, you'll notice it'll start to tighten up. Okay? So what you're going to do, you can take your hammer and some sort of punch. This is just a 3 8 extension that I'm going to use. And just some little quick taps to press this guy into place. You can kind of hear the pitch change when it bottoms out. That's when you know you're sitting pretty good. Once it's set in there, it should sit there. Um, kind of go around and make sure that shim is sitting nice and flush. Okay, so after a couple taps, got this guy into place. Um, so we're going to start putting the uh, uh, caps back on. So always finger start your bolts first. Um, the passenger side here um, has a little um, bracket. Um, this bracket is to hold this wheel in place. You can see the notch here, that's where this piece goes in order to hold that into place um, to set your lockers. Uh, the machine surface always goes to the inside. Um, try and make sure you stay passenger on passenger, uh, driver on driver. Again, finger start the bolts. Okay. So we've got these fingers started, so we know she's not going to pull out. I've got a small punch here because I can see, it's going to be hard to see on the video, but I can see that this shim moved just a little bit while we were working. So I'm going to tap that guy back in, double check this side, get those guys tapped right back in, and then we will take our 19 millimeter socket and hand tighten these guys down. being sure to make sure we uh, crank it all down together and evenly going back and forth so that we tighten it down straight or else it will bind up and then everything will be locked up and won't move. Okay, so as you can see, we've got all four bolts tightened. Um, got some nice free movement. Feels really good. You can just see it's got just a little bit of clearance. We'll check that here in a minute. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to get set up, um, get some of these gears um, painted up uh, so that way we can ch check the mesh pattern uh, to make sure that everything's meshing in real great. Um, and then we will take the dial indicator 
and we will check that back play to make sure we're good to go and then we'll also check the end play uh, to make sure that's good to go. So let's go ahead and get some paint on and check the mesh. Okay, so the Yukon kit comes with a marking compound um, in order to mark um, the gears so you can check your mesh. Um, I normally like to just put just a little dab on each one. Three or four should do you. And then use your brush that's provided and kind of get good coverage inside, bottom, pretty much everywhere you can on those gears. You don't want to put it on too thick because uh, if you do your pattern won't show up very well. Um, but again just get complete coverage on those gears. Okay, got a decent amount of paint on there. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll it around uh, until the um, paint is back on the uh, pinion. And we'll roll it around in there a few times to get a good uh, markings. Okay, and as we come back out, you can see they've made some marks. And we look like we are pretty much dead center of everything, so I think we're in really good shape. Um, I've got 2,000 shim in the pinion um, for the depth, and then I've got just the factory shims in the carrier, um, and that seems to be sitting pretty darn good. Roll around here and just kind of look at everything. It looks good, feels good. Um, so, next thing we're going to do is I'm going to set up a dial indicator and check the uh, play that we have in our gears here um, to make sure it's not too much or too little. You, you have a really um, tight window. Um, if they're too tight, they'll whine and you'll get excessive wear. Uh, if they're too loose, they will actually slap together um, and that could cause one of these teeth to possibly break off um, when you're in a high load situation. Um, so let's do that next. Okay, so we have our dial indicator here with a magnetic base. Um, you will need a magnetic base. Um, I don't really know how else you do it with that one. So put this in place, lock that on. Um, you want to be as in line with the gears as you can be. Um, in order to get a proper measurement. So we are touching that gear right there. So I will roll this around. Make sure all this stuff's locked in so it doesn't move. So we'll roll this around and zero it out. Looks like we're right about six to seven thousandths, which is right in the ballpark of where we need to be um, from five to ten thousandths. So we should be setting real nice. So in play on these should be nothing. So we'll move this around and check the in play and make sure there is no in play. I don't believe there is. We'll get her locked in where she's straightening. And we'll move this guy. Until we have less than a thousandth there. So we are good to go. So, that is our setup on the gears. Now, next step is to blow this all apart um, and get ready for final assembly. Um, final assembly, we have to. Um, put the pinion into the freezer. All right, guys, now that we've got everything blown back apart, um, you want to go ahead and put the pinion in the freezer. We actually did that last night. It was getting late, so we went ahead and put the pinion in there, let it set overnight. 
Uh, so we're back today to finish the job. Um, now that that pinion is all cooled down, we're going to go ahead and heat up the bearing. You're going to want to put that on a cookie sheet, preheat your oven to 350 degrees, let it sit in there for about 20 minutes, and then you'll pull the pinion out of the freezer, slide the bearing on. Now before you put that bearing on, it's very important, make sure that you put the shims on first, because once you put the bearing on, there's no reversing it. So let's go ahead, heat up that bearing, and we'll get after it. basically going to do every step that we did when we were doing the mock fitting um, except this time with all your new pressed in bearings um, and all that to go back into place. got the new gears installed and I'm really happy to say everything is just going great. Uh, I put the 500 mile break-in period on it, the noises are gone, the grinding's gone, just everything's running extremely smooth. Uh, at this time I don't think we need to do the front gears so we're just going to stick with the rears and we'll have the fronts in case anything ever goes wrong there. I want to send a special thank you to our sponsors at Yukon Gear and Axle. You guys make an outstanding product and I cannot wait to take this out on the trails and see what kind of abuse they'll take. I also want to give a special thank you to my cousin for taking a weekend to come help me get these installed. As always, you guys, please hit that subscribe button, like the video, and share it with your friends. Thanks for tuning in, and stay tuned for more how-to videos. 
Peace.